Hello guys and girls. Uh, today I'm going to talk about one of the most hated things to do in biology class. It is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is used during population genetics which is actually one of the more interesting parts but because of the math everybody kind of cringes and tries to hide under their desks during this part of the year. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips to help you mind your P's and Q's. Now when we do this realize that in my biology class you're just going to do the very basics of Hardy-Weinberg equi equilibrium. I'm not going to give you anything super complicated but I don't want you to like take one look at this equation and run screaming into the night. So here we go. First let's just look at the equation. Now here is the equation. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. I know some of you guys are already hiding. Get, get out from underneath the table. Okay. Now when we do this you use this equation to follow one trait in an entire population of animals. So it's one trait. So when we were talking about Punnett squares, we know one trait is a monohyper cross. It's one letter of the alphabet. So each of these sections of this equation correspond to a possible genotype you could get when you did a monohybrid cross. So if you remember which one equals which genotype, it becomes a whole lot easier to figure out what this problem means. So P squared is the homozygous dominant which I'm going to use the letter A as my letter so the big A big A uh, genotype. 2PQ the second little section after the plus sign that's the heterozygous that's big A little a. Then after the second plus sign the Q squared is the homozygous recessive little a little a. Okay now some rules to remember. If you remember these rules when you're starting to plug in your different uh, numbers when you get your word problem started into that equation then you'll get a lot less confused when you're putting them through. Number one, frequency. Now they say the frequency of the population is blah blah okay and everybody gets confused. Now just frequency just means that it's the decimal form of the percent in the population. So like if they say that the 50% of the population is heterozygous, then the frequency of heterozygous is 0.5. So all you're doing is taking whatever percentage they give you and you're making it into the decimal form of that, which you could do by dividing it by 100 or just move your decimal over. Okay. Now, the second thing to remember is that, or just to be sure that you remember, Q squared is equal to the frequency of the recessive phenotype in the population. A lot of times in the word problems, they'll tell you what percentage has, is recessive. And when they tell you what percentage is recessive, the, uh, then all you got to do is give that to the decimal form. And you've got the frequency and you already have Q squared solved. And if you can find Q squared, then you can find Q. And if you can find Q, you can figure out what P is. Because the third and arguably the most important thing to remember is that P plus Q is always going to equal 1. So, for example, if you find out that Q is equal to 0.4, then if you do 1 minus 0.4, then you know what P is because it's 0.6. Now, here's the example we're going to work through. It says you have sampled a population in which you know that the percentage of the homozygous recessive genotype, little a, little a, is 36%. Using that 36%, calculate the following. Okay, we're going to calculate the frequency of the little a, little a genotype first. Then we're going to calculate the frequency of the little a allele. Then we're going to do the frequency of the big a allele. And then finally, we're going to plug all this in and figure out the frequencies of the genotypes big a, big a, and big a, little a. So, step one. The frequency of the little a, little a genotype. Now, they gave you this in the, in the prompt because 36% of the population is recessive. Now if 36% of the population is recessive, the decimal form of that is 0.36. Look, the first part is already solved. Step two, we want to figure out the little a allele. Now the frequency of little a little a is 0.36. So we just need to figure out what one, the frequency of one of those is. Now remember, little a little a and q squared are the same thing. So, you know Q squared and you want to find Q because if Q squared is little a, little a, then 1a is just Q. So, 
take the square root of 0.36. Now use your calculator. It is, and you get that it's 0.6. Now I know that looks weird because you're like, oh wait, it's a square root. It's supposed to be a smaller number. If it is a number smaller than one, and you're taking the square root of it, then it, the square root's going to be larger. All right, step three. This is the part where you remember this, and it makes your life a lot easier. P plus Q equals 1. So you know that Q is 0.6. So do 1 minus 0.6 and P is 0.4. So the frequency of the capital A allele is 0.4. Now, to do our last part, to figure out the frequencies of the big A, big A genotype and the big A, little a genotype, you just have to plug the numbers you've already found out in. So here's your equation. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. We put in all your numbers. P was 0.4, so 0.4 squared plus 2, and then see I have a 0.4 to represent P again, my 0.6 to represent Q, plus, and then Q squared is 0.6 squared, and it's all equal to 1. Now, as you notice, there are no unknowns to solve for in this problem, so it's gone from an algebra expression to a bunch of numbers you just need to crunch. So, get your handy dandy calculator out, crunch the numbers. So, 0.4 squared is 0.16. 2 times 0.4 times 0.6 is 0.48. And 0.6 squared from earlier we knew was going to be 0.36. And if you do your math, it all equals 1. We are almost done. The only thing you have to do now is remember what each part of this equation stands for. So, big A, big A is 0.16 because P squared corresponds to the homozygous dominant uh, phenotype or genotype, sorry. Big A, little a is 0.48. So there's your two ones, and you already know what little a, little a is. We did that earlier. So look, you have just been walked through a Hardy-Weinberg equation. Now, most of the ones that we do are actually all the ones that we do in Biology 1 are going to be that simple. I'm not going to make you do anything else or more Herculean. Now, when you get to AP Biology, that's a different story. So either if you're still confused or if you're curious now that you've been schooled on how to do this math, then this YouTube video goes into more detail about what Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is used for and goes through a few more problems to make sure that you're good. So, but for now, that's a good little uh, e example of how Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium works. So hopefully the problems you have to do will be a lot less stressful now. Okie dokie, hope this helped.